I'm Heidi Rader here in the Alaska Garden. I'm an Associate Professor of Extension with the University of Alaska Fairbanks and I'm going to talk all about growing vegetables, flowers, and berries productively and sustainably in Alaska. Nothing is more agonizing than patiently waiting for sweet strawberries only to be rewarded with luscious green leaves. That's what happened to me when on a whim I bought what sounded like a perfect strawberry for Alaska called Sparkle. In spite of promises for vigorous productive plants and that it was a favorite of northern growers, it only produced a handful of berries. I guess the plants did vigorously produce leaves and they must consider Washington northern. What went wrong? One of the biggest considerations when planting strawberries in Alaska is the variety. Two particularly important aspects of the variety is their response to day length or lack thereof and whether or not they can survive our harsh winters. This is a moving target since our winters are getting less harsh alarmingly quickly. There are strawberries native to Alaska that of course thrive as perennials, the mountain strawberry and the beach strawberry. These species make a nice strawberry patch and even spread beyond your patch and become a bit weedy if you're not careful. But their berries are teensy tiny. Based on response to day length, strawberries are categorized as June bears, ever bears, or day neutrals. Sparkle is a June bearer. It's important to note that plant nurseries do not necessarily use the terms June bears, ever bears, or day neutrals. They may refer to June bears as summer bears, early season, late mid season, or any other term that depicts a particular season. Or they may not say which type of strawberry it is at all. Some June bears only flower and fruit in response to short days, or more precisely, nights that are at least 10 hours long and do so once per season. In interior Alaska, our long days encourage the growth of runners. Our days are only short enough when we also have freezing temperatures and snow. Ever bearers are less dependent on day length for timing the all-important act of flowering and fruiting. They usually do so twice per summer. Generally, day neutral varieties perform better overall than ever bears. Day neutral strawberries, as the name implies, flower and fruit regardless of day length and do so throughout the summer. I like this, otherwise we'd need to turn into a jam factory or gorge on berries for a couple of weeks. On second thought, that might not be so bad. Dr. Miriam Carlson, a horticulture professor at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, suggests growing the day neutral varieties Albion, Seascape, Tribute, Tristar, and others. Another everbearer, Quinault, has proven productive in interior Alaska since the 1980s, but its berries are a bit squishy. I've also grown the ever bearer Fort Laramie as a perennial. For June bears, try Cabot, Toklat, or Alaska Pioneer. Toklat and Alaska Pioneer will do well as perennials. Toklat was actually developed at the University of Alaska Fairbanks Agriculture Experiment Station where I am now. Dr. Miriam Carlson cautions that some varieties like Honey Eye, a June bearer, may do well in South Central Alaska, but not in interior Alaska because the long days do not promote flower and fruit set. In addition to choosing the variety, you also need to know how to grow them. Typically, June bears are most productive in the second year after they are planted and predominantly produce runners in the first year, and so they should be grown in matted rows as a perennial. This is another reason June bears can be problematic for interior Alaska. In addition to their penchant for short days, they also must be cold hardy enough to survive our winters. Ever bears and day neutrals, on the other hand, will produce a crop the same year you plant them. They devote much less energy to growing runners, which thankfully goes into making berries. For annual production, plant the strawberries about a foot apart in rows about a foot apart. If you're growing strawberries as perennials in a matted row, plant the strawberries further apart, one and a half to two feet apart in rows three to four feet apart. Then let the strawberries fill in the rows until the row is 12 to 18 inches wide. It's important to plant strawberries with their roots straight down. You can do this with a dandelion weeder. Wrap the root around the weeder, push it into the soil, and when you shove it in the ground, give a final push at the end to clip off the ends of the roots. You want the plant to be above the soil slightly. You do not want the root to end up in a J when you plant them. Loose soil with good tilth is also key for successful planting and good strawberry growth. Compact clay soil will make planting the strawberries the right way difficult. You can also trim the roots, no more than 25%. Dig the hole deep enough so the soil goes halfway up the crown. 
You don't want exposed roots, but you don't want to bury the growing point either. When growing strawberries as annuals, to maximize productivity, you want to use at least a plastic mulch to block the weeds. A low tunnel, caterpillar tunnel, high tunnel, or greenhouse also works well. Overheating can be a concern as strawberries prefer 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so having the ability to remove the tunnel or move the high tunnel is important. The University of Minnesota has done extensive research on growing strawberries using a low tunnel system. Growing in containers or a hanging basket can also be a way to provide the heat needed to get the berries going in the spring or extend the season in the fall if you can bring them into a warm place. Containers or hanging baskets heat up more than growing plants in the soil. You can fertilize with an organic or conventional high phosphorus fertilizer based on a soil test. Fertigating or adding soluble fertilizer to the irrigation system can be particularly effective. Soil pH should be about 6 to 7. You want to remove runners and daughter plants immediately when you see them when growing strawberries as annuals. If you're overwintering strawberries and establishing a patch of strawberries or matted rows, then do not cut the runners. But eventually, you will need to renovate them or till rows back into the patch to optimize production. Even though our long days and cold winters may limit which strawberry varieties you should attempt to grow in Alaska and how, luckily, there are still plenty to choose from. 